The Nintendo 64 has a special place in my heart, as it is one of the consoles I played the most growing up. Sure, I began my gaming journey with Super Mario World and Donkey Kong Country, both being 2D side-scrollers, but the Nintendo 64 brought those classic games to the third dimension, making them even better. While some of those games may look outdated when compared to newer game consoles, they still hold up today as some of the best games of all time. Today, I will rank my 10 favorite games for this console, in hope that you will be interested in trying some of my picks. Hey, I'm Nico, and here's my top 10 Nintendo 64 games. One of my favorite SNES games of all time has to be Super Mario RPG Legends of the Seven Stars, as it was the first RPG game to feature Mario and his friends. Originally supposed to be a direct sequel to this game, Paper Mario ended up being something quite different, but in a good way. First of all, everything looks like it's made out of paper, which looks really good. Also, this game has the same vibes as Super Mario RPG, so expect a really polished battle engine where you can time your button presses to block enemy attacks and have your attacks become stronger. You'll also meet tons of different partners, each with their own skills and abilities that will be used in combat and out of combat to make your way through the platforming sections. Oh, and you also get to bake a cake for a chubby shy guy at one point in the game, so what more do we need really? <laughs> Alright, look at this commercial for a second. Just look at it and tell me you wouldn't want to play the game featured in this. It is an ad for Super Smash Bros, which at the time was a brand new novel idea where basically every Nintendo character punched each other in the face to the death. Yeah, while the Super Smash Bros series is mainly known for the multiplayer aspect of it, this Nintendo 64 game was more of a single player experience for me. I do remember having a blast clearing classic mode with every single character. Super Smash Bros 64 features the classic Break the target mode that everybody is familiar with, but it also had a game mode that never came back called Board the Platform, in which you had to jump on top of platforms to activate them. Yeah, that's it. But this was my favorite game mode and I'm so sad it never actually came back. While this game might be outdated by today's standard, I feel like it's important to know the roots of your favorite game series and that is why Smash 64 is on this list. The Nintendo 64 era saw a lot of amazing 3D collect-a-thon type games. You know, those games where you have to collect a bazillion things for absolutely no reason? Well, Donkey Kong 64 is no exception to that rule, making you collect golden bananas, standard bananas, peanuts, coconuts, crystals, blueprints, and so much more. Some people may argue that this game has too many things to collect, and you know what? I kind of agree, but it never actually ruined my game experience. This game gives you control of 5 different Kongs, all with their own abilities, weapons and musical instruments, and every single stage contains lots of things for them to collect. The different worlds are super fun to navigate and all are very different from one another, so you'll absolutely want to explore them all for sure. Thankfully, the game gives you those teleporting platforms to help you move faster in those humongous worlds. You'll be fighting some big bad bosses and you'll also get the chance to play as Rambi the Rhino and Engard the Swordfish. So what more do you want from a Donkey Kong game? Mario Party is a very well-known series nowadays, with over 12 games as of right now. But it all started on the Nintendo 64 with the original trilogy. The first three Mario Party games all have their own epic minigames. But I will only pick one for this list, and it will be Mario Party 2. This second game is super cool, featuring 65 different minigames, some of those making a comeback from the first Mario Party game, but with most of them being brand new. And they're super fun too, and you know, they won't hurt your hands while playing like they did in the first Mario Party game. This minigame hurt my hands so bad. 
Anyways, this game was also the first one to introduce items that you could buy and use to unlock secret doors or to reach the star instantly. Also, the attention to detail is phenomenal, with Mario and his pals wearing different costumes depending on the board you choose to play on. The single player adventure mode also makes a comeback and is even better than the first one ever was. I'm not gonna lie, Mario Party 2 is my favorite Mario Party game of all the series. But let's be real, if this list was a top 20 Nintendo 64 games, well, all three Mario Party games would be on it. So, you know, I suggest playing them all. There were two very popular first-person shooters on the Nintendo 64, GoldenEye and Perfect Dark. And while James Bond was more popular for obvious reasons, I mean, it's James Bond, I have to go with Perfect Dark for this list. This game takes place in the future, you know, with flying cars and laser weapons, and it puts you in the role of Joanna Dark, a secret agent going through very different missions, shooting bad guys, hacking computers, and recovering stolen documents and briefcases. There is a lot of missions to choose from, and every mission has many difficulty settings that add more objectives and make the enemy AI smarter. While I did spend a lot of time doing the missions, most of my time was spent in the combat simulator. This game mode allows you to fight your friends or enemy AI in different game modes, like Capture the Flag, King of the Hill, Team Deathmatch, and much more. There are some challenges to complete as well, and tons of things to unlock. The controls and graphics might have aged poorly for the Nintendo 64 version, but here's some good news for you. Perfect Dark is available on Xbox in beautiful 4K. Nice. Did you know? Before being added to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, Banjo and Kazooie had their own game series. Alright, alright, jokes aside, Banjo-Kazooie is a fantastic 3D platformer for the Nintendo 64 in which you take control of Banjo the Bear and his bird friend Kazooie, as they both visit different worlds to collect puzzle pieces, music notes and all sorts of collectibles to defeat Grunty the Evil Witch. You'll be visiting all sorts of different worlds in Banjo-Kazooie, and you'll have to do multiple tasks to get all of the Jiggies needed to get to the next level, and as opposed to Super Mario 64, when you collect a Jiggy, you're not sent back to the main hub, so the game actually encourages you to keep exploring and finding new stuff all the time. Banjo and Kazooie have all sorts of abilities, like ground pounding, shooting eggs, flying, using golden feathers to become invincible, but they also can get transformed into different things by Mumbo Jumbo. This allows them to reach previously unreachable areas. Oh, and good news once again, this game is also available in HD on Xbox nowadays, so you know, you might want to check this out. <laughs> Mario Kart 64 was a very fun kart racing game, and I did play it a lot, but there's an even better one out for the Nintendo 64, and it actually features Donkey Kong's best buddy. Diddy Kong Racing is a fantastic kart racing game that may seem similar to Mario Kart at first, but you'll soon see that this game has way more to offer. First off, Diddy Kong Racing contains an adventure mode featuring a big hub world with many different paths to choose from. There's also three vehicle types to choose, the go-kart for standard tracks, the overcraft to navigate on water, and the plane to fly in the air. Oh, and there's also boss battles against big bad enemies. Yup, boss battles in a kart racing game. Now this is epic. You actually collect golden balloons when finishing in first place, and these balloons allow you to play new tracks, kinda like how collecting stars in Mario 64 works. Each track also has silver coins to collect, making your race way more difficult as you gotta collect all of the coins and finish in first place. Oh, and there's also a battle mode that can be played against AI if you have no real life friends, so that's pretty good for me. <laughs> Seriously, this game has it all and is vastly superior to Mario Kart 64. I actually wish a sequel would come out for the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask is a pretty weird game. First off, it's super depressing, as it takes place in a world where the moon is about to crash on planet Earth and destroy everything, so everybody is kinda scared about that. Second, it's all time-based, with you having 72 hours to fix everything. Thankfully, you can use the Ocarina of Time to go back 3 days in the past and start over as many times as you want. While some people may argue that this time limit is what made them dislike Majora's Mask, well for me, it is what made me love it. 
the fact that almost every single character in the game moves around town and has different things to say based on the time it is. They really seem like they're alive for real and you actually feel involved in their daily lives. And don't forget the many masks that Link can wear, giving him new abilities like running super fast or turning into a Deku, Goron or Zora. The game introduced a million new ideas and threw them all into one beautiful golden cartridge. And it was all developed in only 18 months, which is crazy fast for such a big game. It is now available for the Nintendo 3DS, but I still think the original one is still way better to this day. When they had to decide how they were going to make a 3D Mario game for the Nintendo 64, there probably was many ideas thrown around, but making it about collecting 120 stars in all sorts of crazy different scenarios was a very bold move. And a pretty good one too. Look, there's no need for me to try to sell you guys on how Super Mario 64 is a great game, because you all know it is. What I can say about this game is that it stood the test of time, with tons of amazing modders making it better day after day. Heck, this game is actually the reason why Minus World was created two years ago. It is the reason I met so many cool people, and considering it was one of the first games I played on YouTube when I started years ago, it is probably also the reason I am a YouTuber now. Super Mario 64, I love you. So, what is better than Super Mario 64 in my opinion? Well, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, duh. Often referred to as the best game ever made, Ocarina of Time took what made the previous Zelda games fun and made it 10 times better. This game has a huge, lively world inhabited by all sorts of people, different villages to explore, many dungeons to go through, epic bosses to defeat, and it also has time travel. Yeah, you start off by being a little kid living a boring life in the forest, and you soon grow to be an epic adult, now capable of holding bigger and stronger swords, shields and weapons. Sadly, the time traveling thing wasn't really keen to the world and some areas are left completely destroyed, which is really immersive, especially for a game released in 1998. Ocarina of Time was the base for all of the upcoming future Zelda games up until the last one, Breath of the Wild, that decided to finally redefine the genre. I mean, if your game style can hold up for 20 years before being changed, you know you did something right. Hey, thanks a lot for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe, like and to hit the notification bell to know when I post a new video or a new live stream. <coughs> Speaking of the live streams, if you miss them and would like to see some highlights, well, subscribe to my brand new channel called Nico Live. Yeah, I know, very original. Just tap the big red circle on screen right now. I promise it's really fun to watch, okay? Alright, I will see you in the next one.